All right. Uh, let's see. We are going to start our geometry uh, test one through 50 review part two. Got through 11 uh, on part one. Uh, let's pick up here with question 12. Uh, question 12 uh, is going to give you uh, two parallel. Well, let's see. It's going to give you something that looks. Try to draw better. We've got a straight line across here. Straight line down here. Got a line that comes up here. Parallel. Okay, line down here. Parallel. The segments can grow into this segment. And we see a diagonal line come down here. Uh, we see something say like point P. Point A, point B, we'll say D, Q, C. All right, I think that's everything that's kind of included in this. The question that you're going to get asked is we want to determine if we can use the hypotenuse leg congruency theorem to prove that triangles ACD is congruent to triangle DBA. Um, and yeah, the short answer is probably going to be yes. But what I'm looking for out of you is that um, I want to be able to say, because here I have two parallel lines and line AD is cut by a transversal, okay, that I have, uh, let's see how I want to put this. Oh, gosh. Give me a second here. Okay. Mm, all right. So, because two parallel, here I'll just show you what we're looking for, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, have corresponding angles congruent. Okay, uh, angle B, D, Q is congruent to angle A, C, D. Okay, which is what's going to make angle C a right angle. Okay, because I have these two black lines that are cut by a transversal. The transversal is this line right here, okay, which means this angle and this angle are corresponding angles, which makes them congruent, okay, and that same thing happens uh, up here with this angle and this angle, so we can say and angle PAC is congruent to angle ABD. Okay. So what I have now is I have two right triangles. And finally, what I want to say is AD is congruent to segment AD because of the reflexive axiom. Okay. Now what I have is, well, we know CD is equal to AB. Okay. So CD is congruent to AB. Okay. That's given. Okay. That's enough. Okay. Uh, at that point, I can say 
Yep, hypotenuse leg. Okay, because at this point we know that AD is a hypotenuse because these are two right triangles. Uh, we know that we have two legs of these two right triangles that are congruent, therefore hypotenuse leg will work. But the information I want to try to show is found in here. I know that seems like a lot, uh, so do your best. Uh, I might be generous on this one, okay? But do your best. Actually try to have an explanation, right? Don't be weak on it, okay? All right, number 13, okay? All right, number 13 is going to ask you to find the circumcenter of a triangle given three sets of coordinates. So let's just, uh, it's going to give you a picture and ask you for the circumcenter. All right, let's, um, let's make up some numbers. So like let's do negative 4, uh, negative 4, 8. Let's do uh, negative 4, negative 4. And let's do 8, negative 4. Okay, we talked about this a while ago. Uh, normally with a circumcenter, uh, with a circumcenter, what we would normally have to do is we would have to find the midpoint of each of the three sides that connects, and then we'd have to draw that back to the vertex, uh, not unlike something that would look like, okay, where we had no, here, here, here. Okay, so we'd be drawing this back to there, here, here, to get our circumcenter and find out what that coordinate pair is. Okay, but I think what we can do, and I'll double check on this, is that uh, we can take our, our x's, so negative 4 plus negative 4 plus 8 and divide by 3. So negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Okay. Then we can take our y's. 8 plus negative 4 plus negative 4. Right. Uh, let's see. Okay. And divide by 3. Okay. Which again is 0 divided by 3. So we get 0, 0. I want to see. Okay, so upon further review and looking at this, uh, this is not what we want to do here. Okay, so I think, and I'll even help you out, uh, on this question on the test, this is a right triangle. So one of the things um, I was thinking along the lines of is, uh, I was thinking along the lines of uh, a centroid, and this is not that. So if we look at this like this is what we're going to find, okay? Uh, what we're trying to find, uh, these different points, are the perpendicular bisectors. So for instance, this is going to go straight up like this, okay? Uh, this is going to come, you know, for the most part straight across like this. All right, and then we're looking for something that's probably coming straight down through here where everything is perpendicular to everything else. And we're looking for that particular point of intersection to find the circumcenter. All right, so one of the things I think that we can do with something like this is uh, find, find the midpoint. So uh, what do we say with A? Uh, a is negative 4, 8. Okay, that's here. And then we had negative 4, negative 4 here. Okay, and then we had, uh, let's see, 8, negative 4 here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to figure out with this point right here what the equation of that line is. Okay, um, let's see. Well, from the distance across our x values is from 
negative 4 to 8, so that's a distance of 12 across. Okay, see if I can find a shorter way of getting us there. Okay, which means half the distance of that is going to be 6. So this coordinate is at uh, 2, negative 4. And it's going straight up. So in a straight line, all right, that's going to be x equals, and we're going to use our x coordinate. Okay, x equals 2. Okay, um, we can do the same thing over here and find out what that's going to be. Uh, we're looking at the distance between our y values. Hold on. All right, so picking up from where I left off here, uh, let's see, let's look at our distance uh, from negative 4, negative 4 up to negative 4, 8. Uh, that looks like that also has a distance of 12. Okay, from negative 4 to 8 is 12. All right, which means, you know, this is 6, this is 6. Uh, so that's going to bring us up from negative 4. Okay, so from negative 4 to 0 is 4. And so we need, uh, this is going to be at uh, negative 4, 2. All right, so that's a horizontal line that comes across here. So that's going to be y equals, uh, y equals 2. Okay, uh, let's see. So we really, at this point, could look at where those two lines are going to cross at. And those two lines should cross at 2, 2. Um, because, I mean, because they should all three cross at one position, uh, the third line should cross where the other two lines cross at. And so we would get 2, 2 for an answer here. And we can do that based upon our horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, if that makes sense. All right. All right, number 14. Scroll down here a little bit. All right, it says uh, we want to find the area of the shaded region. We're going to get a rectangle. Okay, it's going to have a cutout. It's going to look like this. It's going to have a shaded region over here. Okay, and we're going to want to find the area of the shaded region. They're going to tell us that, uh, let's say, the length of this is 8 inches. The width here is 7 inches. And just so that you understand this, this is a semicircle here. Okay, so really what we want to do is we want to take the area of the rectangle and subtract the area of the semicircle. Okay, well, the area of the rectangle is 8 times 7, okay, or 56, okay, and so this is, well, just so that you understand, uh, this is length times width minus uh, pi r squared divided by 2. Okay, so in our case, 56 minus pi, and then we would want um, 7 is the diameter. What we want is going to be this length, which should be 3.5. So 3.5 squared divided by 2. Okay, so in my calculator over here, I'm going to show that, but I'm going to do 56 minus, uh, I'm going to do in parentheses, so I have the whole thing, pi, uh, let's see, let's do two sets of parentheses, pi, 3.5 squared, that's all in my numerator, divided by 2, it's my denominator, and I get 36.75 and that's going to be 36 point uh, we wanted this to the nearest tenth so we're going to do 36.8 inches squared okay is what we should get okay um, I'm going to pause here for a second because I want to double check and make sure that that matches uh, with our means for how we're going to solve the the actual question
Okay, everything seemed to match up and work out really well there. Uh, just make sure that you use those parentheses if you're going to try to do it all as one thing. Okay, 15. All right, we have a right triangle here. Uh, let's say 20 and 24. And I'm going to bring this down a touch, something like this, where this is also 24. And this is 16. Okay, uh, let's call this A. B, C, and D. All right, we want to compare, compare measure of angle ABC, okay, that is this angle, to measure angle CBD. Okay, that is this angle. What is the relationship? And what you should notice is that these two links are the same because of the reflexive axiom, and these two links are the same. The difference is what is opposite of each of these two angles given everything else. Notice that what is opposite ABC is 20 to what is opposite CBD, which is 16, which means measure angle ABC is greater than measure angle CBD, okay? But I'm going to show that, okay? That's going to be my answer. Okay, 16, 16 um, says find the distance, okay, uh, from the center to a eight inch cord okay find the distance from the center of a circle from the center yeah. here I'm gonna do something different here this is getting a little crazy trying to write all this up but we're gonna go ahead and try to type it okay I'm gonna show you exactly what's in this question 16 Okay, that might be a little easier to understand and work with. All right, so if we're talking, we're talking first about a circle. Okay, find a distance from the center. Okay, so center about there. Uh, find a distance from the center of a circle to an eight inch cord. So we're gonna try to keep this simple. Okay, we're gonna say that that's eight inches. Okay, eight inch cord if the circle has an 18 inch diameter okay and so we could draw that diameter anywhere and we could draw that cord anywhere but we want to give it something that's going to make it easy for us so we're going to say that this okay is our 18 inch diameter which means that it has a 9 inch radius 
okay, nine inch radius, okay, from here to here. I could draw that anywhere, but I want to draw it there, okay, that is a radius, okay. We want to know the distance of there to there, okay. Now, the other thing that we know is that not only is that divided into two, but this is met at a right angle, and this is divided into two, which means if the cord is eight inches, where it's divided by that diameter, it's now a right triangle, okay, that looks like this. And what I want to solve for is the x, okay? And I can use that, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. So I'm going to use four squared plus x squared equals nine squared. I got 16 plus x squared equals uh, 81. We're going to subtract 16 from 81. x squared equals, I'm going to grab my calculator because I don't know, 81 minus 16. Okay, comes out to 65. Okay, I'm going to square root 65. Okay, the square root of 65 to the nearest hundredth. Okay, x equals 8.06, and that's inches, 8.06 inches. So literally all of this is part of your work, okay? The only thing that's given to you is this, okay? That's all that's being given to you. You have to draw everything else. Okay, so you're going to have to take those pieces. Okay. All right, let's look at 17. Okay, I want you to write and solve an equality for x. Okay, let's see how good a job I can do. Uh, let's see, we need a right triangle. It's going to look... Something like that. We need another one to... Hmm. I don't know if this will let me rotate you or not. Hmm. Not the way I want you to. Alright, we'll get rid of this. And... Still not what I want. Hmm. Will it, yeah, it'll let me flip. Okay. All right. Copy, paste, flip. Okay, we get. Something like this. Okay. We need one little right angle box. So far, all of this is going to be given to you. Um, let's see. We need, let's call this 4x plus 8 is the hypotenuse. Um, let's call this... 16 is that length there. We need some letters. We know that this is A, B, C, B. All right, write and solve an inequality for X. Okay. And I think one of the things they do here. Um, they go ahead and they show you that these lines go on forever in these two directions. Okay, so one of the things you want to notice is that this is a right triangle. Okay, and what do we know about the hypotenuse of a triangle, of a right triangle? We know that the hypotenuse is the longest side. So our work here, we should note that 4x plus 8 
has to be greater than 16. And it says solve the inequality for x. So at this point, I'm subtracting 8. I'm getting 4x is greater than, uh, 4x is greater than 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. Uh, x is greater than 2. That's my answer. This is my work. Okay, it took me longer to set up the question than it did to solve it. Okay, let's look at 18. All right, 18 is real similar to, I think, number 16 that we just did. Uh, let's see, we want to find, this is 18, find, oh, uh, we'll use something similar to what they use. Um, but, and they'll, they'll give you this picture, but you're going to have to do what we did to number 16, which is draw a bunch of other stuff in here. All right, so we got a circle, looks like that. Um, let's see, we need a line segment. Uh, it's going to start kind of in the center here. Go up. Okay, we need a chord. It's going to come across like this. Um, let's see. Uh, let's kind of fiddle. Uh, well, anyway. Make sure we know we have. Okay, that's our center point. Um, we need a right angle. Okay, so we can see that these two are coming to a right angle here. We need some letters B and D. Okay, that's what they're trying to solve is from one end of this chord to the other. Um, let's see, what do they tell me? This is F. This is A. We need some numbers. They're going to tell me that this is 12. Um, let's see, we need another letter here. This is C, which is this point of intersection between B, D, and F, A. Okay, and I think they're going to tell me that F, C, that distance is 8. Okay. All right. So what we should see out of that, I believe, is that the whole of AF is 20. Okay. So uh, let's see. We need to find. Hold on. Let me make sure. Okay. All right. So the whole radius is 20. So let's let's look at some other stuff here. All right, so I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a different line, okay? Because if this radius is 20, then all radiuses are 20, which means this length is 20 here, okay? So now what I'm seeing is that I have a right triangle that looks like this, where this leg is 12 and the hypotenuse is 20, and BC is going to be the same length as CD because it's going to bisect that chord. AF bisects the chord BD. So if I find out what BC is and double it, I'll know what BD is because this is ultimately what I want, even though a lot of people don't find it. So we're going to find this uh, by taking 12 squared plus X squared equals 20 squared. Uh, 12 squared is 144, plus x squared equals 400. Uh, we want to subtract 144 from both sides. We're going to get x squared equals 400 minus 144. Okay, so we get 256 square root both. x equals square root of 256 is 16. Okay, but x isn't what we want here. We know that this is 16, which means this has to be 16. What we want is this whole length, which is 16 times 2. So our answer is BD equals 32. Okay, um, but really all of this is my work. Okay, that's how I'm getting it. All right, BD is 32. All right, 19. 
getting towards the end here. It's good because I want to go home. 19. Oh my. More circles. Okay. 19. 19, we have to remember some things about inscribed angles. So I'm going to say a wheel from a motor has springs arranged as in the figure. Find the measure of angle BOC. Okay. All right. So let's get a circle. Oh, that's a square. Okay. Circle. Okay. And we need some line segments. Okay. Something like this and this and this. Uh, we're going to put in some numbers. We're going to say, um, let's say that this is 38 and this is 22. We need some letters. We know that this is A, B, uh, O. It's angle O, by the way. D, C. Okay, and let's uh, just so that we have them. Um, let's take this down about ten. So you see. This is a degree. Here and here. So, things that we want to know. Okay, I'm just going to write up some things you want to know. Uh, one, okay, one thing you want to know is that an inscribed angle. equals one half the intercepted arc okay which means uh, for instance that inscribed angle B A C okay which is 22 degrees is half the intercepted arc which means uh, for instance arc BC is 44 degrees Okay, and if that's true, then if I'm looking at arc AD and I want to know what angle A, or let's use a different color, A, B, D is, I'm going to take 38 and divide by 2. Uh, let's see, 38 divided by 2 is not one that comes to my mind. 19 degrees. So what we find out is that this is 19 degrees right here. The other thing I want to know is that vertical angles are congruent. And vertical angles here are this angle and this, and this angle. Those are vertical angles to each other. Okay. So if I find angle O here, then I know angle DOC there. Okay? And number three, 180 degrees is equal to a triangle. All right, so I can take 22 plus 19. Uh, what is that? 41. Okay? So I got a total of 41 degrees spoken for. I just need to take 180 minus 41 degrees. Oh, and I think I'm going to get something like 139. Let's double check some of my math. 22 plus 19 is 41. 180 minus 41 is 139 degrees. Okay, so if this is 139, then this is 139. Okay. Another thing that we can see is that, uh, let's see, that this inscribed angle meets the same 44 intercepted arc, which is 44 
or sorry, which would be 22 degrees, and A, C, D meets the same 38 degree intercepted arc. So I'm going to take the same 38 divided by 2, get the same 19 degrees here. So the same 22 plus 19 is the same 41, which is, you know, subtracted from the same 180 degrees in the triangle. So we should be able to see it there. Okay. Uh, again, this is my work. So I want to be able to make sure that um, if I'm taking a test that Mr. Wilcox knows that I know this. It's not a guess, right? I'm showing the math. I understand this. Because if I don't understand it, then the points really don't, you know, not really justify just because it's multiple choice test. Uh, so it means you're not going to get credit for it, right, if you can't prove it. All right. Uh, let's see. Question number 20. Uh, question number 20 is going to involve geometric mean. So we want to find x, y, and z. Uh, we want to express uh, your answers in radical form, so not decimals. Well, let's see, let's grab a right triangle. Let's see. Uh, something like this, but I want to flip it. Um, here. We're going to rotate it around. We want it to kind of look like the one on the test. And then we want to flip. Nope. There we go. All right. So we got something that looks like this. Um, we're going to make sure we understand that it's a right triangle. So we need a right angle. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have our altitude line. Okay. So we're going to see an altitude line. Uh, being drawn through here uh, to something that looks kind of like this. Okay, and it's also at a right angle. We're going to kind of tilt it so that we... Ew. Okay, we may have to... Move this a little bit. Kind of get the gist of it. All right, so it's not great, but it's there. Uh, let's get some letters. So we're going to say that this is Z. We're going to try to find that. Uh, this is, oh, let's say it's 12. This link down here is X. Uh, down here is Y, and uh, let's make this 8, okay, all right, all right, so we want to find X, Y, and Z, uh, okay, all right, so finding, finding X, okay, so this is going to be step one. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is that you want to notice that 8 here is an altitude. And in our stuff, right, we learn that 8 is the geometric mean, okay, which means it goes there and there, of, uh, let's see, of the segments of the hypotenuse. So should be of 12 and x. Okay? So 8 times 8 is 64, equals 12x, divided by 12, divided by 12. We should get, uh, let's see, 64, divided by 12. And so we get something like x equals 5 and 1 third. I'm going to pause here for a second and make sure. Uh, let's see.
I want to double check that with what we get for the other. Okay, yep, that works for X. So here we get 5, 5 5.3 or whatever. So we're going to leave that as 5 and 1 third. But this, this is how we would solve X. Okay, so we know that this is 5 and 1 third now. Okay, the other thing that we learn is that um, how to find Y. Okay. Uh, why? This is step two. Okay, we learn that y is the geometric mean, which means it goes here and here, of the length of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to y. Okay, so to that respect, it would be the geometric mean of 17 and one third and five and one third. Okay, it's not great here that, I mean, I'm making up these numbers, uh, so they don't always come out nice and neat. So, you know, let's see uh, if I can do this. Um, here, I'll show you from calculator what we're doing here. Um, let's see. So we want to do 17 plus 1 divided by 3, okay, uh, times 5 plus 1 divided by 3, okay, 19.4 repeating, all right, so I get 832 uh, over 9, so I get y squared equals uh, 832 divide by 9, we would square root that, okay, to get y, okay, uh, I'm going to double check and make sure that all this is being done right in comparison to what's on the test, so give me just a second. Unfortunately, this, this is right, but what we wind up with here is the square root of 832 uh, over the square root of 9, so we get square root of 832 divided by 3, we can probably uh, go ahead and reduce the square root, you know, find the square root of 832 simplified down. So like 832, you know, that's going to be 2, and it's going to be some fairly large numbers. And we'll go ahead and reduce it just so that you end up seeing the process of 832 divided by 2 is 416. 416 divided by 2 is 208. 2 divided by 2, let's see, it's 104. 2 divided by 2 is 52. Divided by 2 is 26. 2 and 13, that's where it's going to stop. All right, so here we get y equals, uh, let's look, we got 1, 2, 3. So 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 uh, is 4. Times 2 is 8. So we're getting 8 square root of 13 divided by 3 is what y comes out to with these numbers. All right, fortunately for everybody, um, what we have here for z is we have a right triangle. So bottom is 8, uh, this leg is 12, right? Uh, you could solve this the same way we solved y, but you don't have to because z is the hypotenuse. So for z... All right, which is the third part. Okay, you can simply do 8 squared plus 12 squared equals z squared. All right, so you have 64 plus 144 equals z squared. 64 plus 144 is 208 equals z squared. Okay, we can square root 208. Sorry. Square root of z, sorry, uh, square root of 208. In fact, actually, what's kind of cool about it is that you see that uh, already right here. Okay, so I should get 4 radical 13. Okay, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it, 
I, I think the question on the test is going to be a little bit easier than this. Uh, I, like I said, I picked some numbers here. Uh, Z, Z, you should be able to do right off the bat, right off the bat with the Pythagorean theorem. Um, X, you should be able to do geometric mean just fine. Uh, and really, honestly, uh, you can find Y a little bit easier because if you notice, this is also a right triangle. All right, you're just trying to find the hypotenuse. So you have five and one third. You have eight. Uh, you could do eight squared plus five and one third squared equals y squared, and solve for y that way. Just keep in mind that you have to have it in simplified radical form. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's that's it. I'm going to end it right there. Hopefully you watch this. Okay. All right.